basically occur because they can be hereditary, you can inherit it from your parents, but also because of the immune system in the body that reacts abnormally to normally harmless substances because the pollens in the atmosphere or the dust mite or the foods that we eat, these are not har harmful things, these are normal things, but the body's immune system of the person who's allergic recognizes that as an enemy like it's not good for you you know so it starts responding by trying to throw it out or discard it and in the process of trying to discard it in layman's term I'm saying in the process of trying to discard it it lands up with producing symptoms and the symptoms um, lead to the disease itself allergies unfortunately are chronic so they're not really curable uh, at this stage but they can be well controlled so the allergies can be in effect different parts of the body so you have allergies of the eyes and nose, like we call rhinoconjunctivitis, or in Japan more famously known as kafunsho, uh, but also sunense adegisebien, which means allergic rhinitis, which is perennial in the, throughout the year, and it's uh, usually due to house dust mite or to cat or fungus or dog or things like that. And then you also have food allergies. So you things that you eat, you react abnormally, like uh, crustaceans, like uh, soba, like uh, peanuts, like egg milk in very small kids is very common. And then also um, wheat is, is common. So you can have to that. You can have very severe allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, which is like, like going into shock, life threatening. You can have allergies to drugs like penicillin and stuff like that. Like, uh, sulfurs, penicillins, some radio contrast dyes. You can have allergies uh, to, in the skin. So there are different types of allergies. And allergies are increasing worldwide to epidemic proportions. That's, uh, um, in fact, it's probably more than what we talk about the SARS or, you know, all these kind of uh, viral epidemics that occur. But the burden of allergies is huge. And it, just in Japan, it's $3 billion are spent on just the treatment costs of rhinitis alone. So you can imagine all the allergies together. So it's, it's a huge health burden. And all over the world, we are trying to find ways of how we can prevent it or how we can uh, stop the severity of it. It's, that's the research going on. And the new thing in it is the microbiome. So that's, that's the, the, the microbiome of the bacteria in early life in the intestines, in the gut that develop in the first hundred days so depending on the the food habits of the mother the food habits of the child the exposure to infections the exposure to antibiotics those change and they can program you to not only just allergies but a variety of uh, non-communicable diseases like obesity diabetes hypertension so the first hundred years of life and the gut microbiome are very very important so that's an area of research that we are also working on with birth cohorts and for for people in Japan uh, kafunsho is is the most uh, troublesome uh, and it's the important thing is it's not just people who are Japanese people but foreigners who come here over time they get sensitized and it is known that the immigrants are tend to have more severe symptoms than the local uh, people. And this has been proven in, in Australia, in Italy, in many studies. So the, the important thing is uh, nobody dies of allergic rhinitis, unlike food allergies, but you need to treat it. So you need to identify what's the cause. And once you know what the cause is, there are good medications, safe medications, safe antihistamines, which are second generation, safe nasal steroids, you know, so these medications and under the prescription and evaluation of a doctor, not just looking at the blood test or something. So um, those kind of things are very important. And food allergies also, just looking at a blood test and you're allergic to 40 different um, food substances, that's not true. You need to have more uh, like a skin testing or a food challenge test to prove or a personal experience of having reacted to a kind of food. So those kind of things are very important. So the correct knowledge and the correct access to a doctor is very important and to take the treatment is very important because that will prevent and especially things like kafuncho uh, can lead to asthma if not treated because it's one airway it's one airway so uh, uncontrolled nasal allergy leads to asthma
the goggles and the mask are basically because allergen avoidance is the first step of treatment. Allergen avoidance means you reduce the burden of how much allergen you, you're inhaling or coming into contact with. There is no 100% avoidance uh, possible because even with the mask and the glasses, you always will be exposed to some amount of the allergen. What's important is then to take good medications and not over-the-counter medications. So you have to evaluate, get yourself evaluated. And then the World Health Organization has developed guidelines called ARIA. And also there are local Japanese guidelines, which is now modified on the basis of ARIA. I was part of the authors who developed the guidelines in 1999 with World Health Organization. And that tells you to use new, new generation antihistamines, which don't have side effects like Allegra, for example, fexofenadine or uh, uh, levozetrazine or, uh, or uh, uh, claritin. So these are the non-sedative antihistamines. And the nasal sprays of the newer generation, uh, those are also good because they don't have any side effects. Uh, they are safe. So it's better to take that even in children because that controls your allergies and prevents you from getting uh, worse. Otherwise, it can become worse and lead to asthma too. That's another area of research and in fact that was another initiative that we did during my presidency of WOW. We came out with a publication called GLAD-P that is uh, Guidelines for the Prevention of Atopic Disease. And what we did is we used uh, the, a system run by McMaster uh, called the GRADE system which is the highest level of evidence and using that GRADE approach we evaluated the various uh, substances available like probiotics, prebiotics which you get in the form of yogurt and this thing, um, vitamin D, uh, short chain fatty acids. Um, so a variety of these things are being uh, evaluated. And we uh, three publications are already done. And the data that has been shown is that vitamin D did not have any evidence, but there's some new papers coming in, so we have to reevaluate it. But, with, but probiotics and prebiotics have been shown to prevent uh, the development of eczema in a certain proportion of children but not for rhinitis or asthma yet so we don't have any uh, dietary um, interventions that we can do now or any preventive interventions that we can do to alter that